Okay, um, good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, uh, how WS2 API managers support the Ministry of Agi, Aj and Humra. Uh, my name is uh, Stefano Negri, I'm Solution Architect from WSO2 and together with me uh, today we, we have Ajmal Hussein from uh, Segel Technology Integration Team Lead. And before we start, I uh, have a couple of information uh, regarding the organization of the webinar. The first is to just to make you aware that uh, the webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link of the recording later uh, today or the day after um, so you can review the, 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 the whole webinar. And the second information is regarding a question. So you uh, you have a question um, part in, in, uh, in, in the webinar uh, screen so you can uh, put any question you 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 want in in that session, and we will um, take them uh, in the la last part of, of the webinar. So let's uh, then let's uh, start. So the, the the webinar is organized in three main uh, parts. I will uh, be taking um, the lead of the first part and uh, for introducing you to WSO2 and uh, a bit more. So introducing explaining uh, discussing a bit of what's happening or we are what what's we are notice happening in the public sector world um, and then i will hand over to um, ajmal uh, for the the case study and then we will have a question and uh, answer uh, session so which are uh, the main challenges in the public sector nowadays? So this is, I get some information from the experience that we are having with company around the world, with company in, in, in the public sector. And what we notice is that uh, there is an, a, these new approaches uh, to offer services in the private sector as have raised uh, citizens and residents of the final user of the public sector expectation uh, regarding the delivery of the public services as well. So people who are using uh, um, or are changing their behavior to interact uh, with company for what is about the delivery of services, and they have the same expectation in the public sector. So when, when it comes to indication of new residents, uh, communication of the birth, uh, of course, uh, or the possibility to carry out all the formalities for starting and managing a business or everything related to the health services, uh, they expect to have a, a new digital experience. Uh, the services are more and more accessed digital. Digital. Digitally does not mean that they have uh, is not limited to the fact that they can submit, for example, a form electronically. It's something more. So citizens should be able to easily interact with government agencies using uh, several options or several channels eh, including the latest technologies and the latest uh, portals so for example is not any more acceptable than that they have to do what they often uh, has to do so to submit uh, the, 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 their data for them the birth data or status data several times. Huh? So the only one, one solid principle is becoming a must. However, uh, public uh, uh, administrator, uh, uh, in order to provide this uh, digital experience, uh, usually face several, several issues or several problems. Huh? The first is that um, uh, is related to the, um, the information of, of the data of the users, of the, of the citizens, of the residents, etc., which are always scattered over uh, many, many um, data sources uh, in the company. So uh, to, to overcome this problem, they most likely need an integration layer. And uh, integration nowadays, uh, integration is something that has also evolved. It's not, uh, uh, even if it's a, is a, is a uh, something that is in the market for 20 years, uh, it, has, it has to have uh, new functionalities. So at the same time, it has to support uh, integration with legacy system, uh, but at the same time, it has to be 
uh, something new huh? he has to support for example new protocols huh? because he has to support the protocols that the, the this digital world speaks uh, for example rest uh, json or, or data uh, or protocol like a amqp or mqtt and at the same time they have to support a wide range of native connector because most likely he has to connect to a legacy system or um, legacy protocols uh, but uh, he, oh, another functionality that he should support nowadays uh, is what uh, everything related to streaming functionalities eh? because uh, ETL for example is moving through uh, um, streaming ETL and at the same time he has to have an eye a special eye for all the world related to cloud so it has to integrate cloud uh, and he has to be can be deployed on the cloud uh, the second um, problems that the company most likely has to face is everything related to uh, identity and access management so um, uh, the, also the, the data related to the to the user are most likely uh, scattered over different uh, user store not only in, in, in a company in, in a single agency but most likely over more different agencies so he had the needs of a tool which uh, act as a, a central user repository for everything related to authentication authorization a user management and most likely this is uh, must happen not only uh, in, in specific uh, um, government agency over many government agency because the same user can be registered in in, in different in different uh, sides so he has most likely uh, need the, not, not only a, a classical enterprise identity access management but something that is evolving what we call customer identity access management or being related to the public sector we can call it citizen or residence identity access management and again also here the, the product is must be um, but have a look at the, the, the new uh, digital experience that users are used to have uh, for example, uh, what it comes to login is typically uh, citizens typically used to have functionality like single sign-on or uh, everything related to social login to the to, to the social world uh, login with with uh, his favorite uh, uh, social form or uh, to 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 have some functionality like self registration or identity federation is also important because uh, what we have said before because it may be that uh, data user data has spread over many 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 resources okay now uh, once everything is done let's suppose uh, a government agency has his, uh, all his backend system integrated he has a perfect uh, customer identity access management in place so you can simply put, put a web service on top of that and allow a, a citizen or residence to connect with this laptop and provide his data uh, to, to, to the backend and interact with the, with, the, with the agency. But this is for hard, is quite limiting if you imagine something, nothing new, I would say, and definitely is not, is not what we call digital. In order to have some, something more, um, what is recommended what is, is a trend nowadays is to have not only a web server portal web portal but an api portal because an api portal uh, allow a third party a provider to develop app based on the api provided by the government agency which in, in provide uh, the um, uh, expose the internal assets to the digital world and like this users or citizens or residents can use their preferred preferred app using their preferred devices and uh, this multiplies 10 times the um, opportunity for a citizen to interact with the with the with the agency with the government agency and creating allowing uh, the access not only to a limited um, type of users but to a wide, wider range of type of user created what we can call it a, a, a sort of 
digital democracy. Even because uh, the, um, the, the problem of uh, um, indirect uh, login has been brilliantly solved by protocol like OAuth, uh, they can in indirectly access the, uh, the user management tool of, of, the, of the agency. So this is possible via an API management tool, uh, which make uh, internal assets available to uh, the app community, which allow a control um, control access to the services and data and allow users to to use their favorite apps when they where they want when they want uh, according to a principle to to be present where people are and this can also create what we call an api ecosystem so also other um, potential external agencies or connected to the public sector provide on the same api portal their own api um, as, an, as an example of this, it's, I want to tell you what happened in Italy. I'm Italian, you know, we, are, we have been uh, hardly hit by the uh, COVID issue. And this is, uh, one, this is our WS2 API portal that they deploy on their system and they, they could easily provide API related to COVID data to external uh, third party uh, developers. And so, the, 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 they could they was able to um, uh, give access to the uh, to the data to a wider range of potential users and it's helping to to handle in a better way this difficult uh, difficult moment so all this is uh, allow me to introduce um, what we can offer or what we can do for you regarding these uh, these um, challenges that we have seen today so What's a, what's a, what is uh, our values? Our values uh, is based on our uh, com, uh, integration platform, WS2 integration platform, which is uh, made up of three main pillars. Eh? API manager, which addresses uh, the full, life, full API lifecycle, and it is an open and extendable and customizable tool. Then we have enterprise integrator, which is an uh, hybrid integration platform for a quick iterative integration of any application, data, or system. And then we have WS2 Identity Server, eh, which can uh, federate and manage identities across uh, different, across, across the enterprise or uh, across many uh, connected enterprise and cloud services, etc. These are the main, these are the, 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 the pillar of our offer. And on, on this offer, we provide support and maintenance services. So we can provide you um, with um, a supported distribution of these softwares with the, the latest updates, security updates, etc. And then you can rely uh, with our support on an or a variety of, or a variety of installation mechanisms, or you can rely on our 24 times seven expert incident support query support and uh, other services, consultancy services they can. And we provide you with the flexibility of uh, uh, deploy uh, our, our component on premises, on private cloud, public cloud, on hybrid environment. So it's a very uh, extendable and flexible uh, tool. You can, for example, start using on premises and then move a cloud on the other way around because the, the product is very uh, can adapt uh, to, to any uh, deployment option. Uh, finally, let me uh, explain some words about WS2 as a company. Um, okay, we, we are an open source comp um, company, so our products are uh, open source. Um, we are uh, more than 600 employees nowadays, and what's a uh, character? Uh, uh, we are specializing the fact that 50% of our employees are engineers. We have more than 600, 500 customers, and we are on the market for many years nowadays. We have been founded in, it's been founded in 2005, and we have a global presence. We have office, uh, the main offices are in Colombo, Sri Lanka, Mountain View, USA, but we have offices in London, New York, Sao Paulo, Sydney, Berlin. Mexico and Italy, and we are growing. We are a company which constantly grow 
year after year. Regarding customers, uh, as you can see here on the map, we cover the whole world. And uh, each market for us is a market, is the market, is an important market. We don't have preferences. Um, and also uh, regarding the sector, we are covering uh, um, each and every sector from financial, healthcare, transport, education. And of course, we are uh, um, quite present in the government sector uh, with the uh, company, relevant company uh, worldwide. There is a list of customers in the public sector that uh, um, where we these agencies use our product to achieve their goals. So as you can see, there are either uh, central government uh, uh, agencies like uh, government of Moldova or Croatia, others, or uh, over countries uh, agencies like European Commissions. Uh, regional agency, as I mentioned before, what's, up, what's happened in Italy, but we have many, uh, many uh, regional governments, for example, in Italy and in Spain. And, um, uh, okay, of course, uh, today uh, we will present you the case of Ministry of Baj, but we have another relevant uh, uh, customer in, in the Middle East, which is Bahrain National Broadband Network, BNET, which is select us after uh, being a spin-off uh, the, 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 the company has been created on so they had the, the need to set up quickly an integration a middleware or integration framework and so they selected that for a middleware which uh, communicate uh, a lot with the communication between all the systems of the company uh, from BSS to OSS uh, over different protocols and transport and what's relevant uh, with the tight uh, time to production timeline. So this is uh, what I want to um, present you as introduction. Now I'm handing over of the central part of this webinar, which is be led by Ashman. So I make him presenter and Ashman, over to you. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I am Ajmal Hussain uh, from CGL Technology and uh, I will be presenting the case study of uh, Ministry of Hajj and Umrah. And I will be explaining how we utilize WSO2 API Manager for our organization. So here is a brief of what we are going to cover as part of this uh, webinar case study. I will explain that uh, uh, what kind of projects we are involved in and what kind of integrations we have. And uh, then I will explain that what was the significance and what was the core need of having an API management platform in our organization. And once we uh, foresee the need for an API management platform, then how we evaluated different options available in the market, what was the selection criteria uh, based on which we landed uh, finally at WSO2 API management platform for our organization. And then I will explain that uh, once we selected uh, WSO2 API management platform for uh, Ministry of Hajj and Umrah integration projects, then how we are benefiting from this platform and how we see that uh, overall value addition for the integration um, frameworks that we have. And last but not least, I will explain that uh, how WSO2 support model fits into our needs and how we are benefiting from uh, the options that are available from WSO2 uh, to support uh, what our operations we have uh, from API management perspective. So before I go into the details, uh, let me first give you a quick recap of uh, what basically CGL technology is doing uh, in the integration area uh, for the projects of Ministry of Hajj and Umrah. Uh, as most of you might be aware that uh, Hajj and Umrah is uh, a religious uh, pilgrim uh, and uh, millions of people every year come to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj once in a year and Umrah continues throughout the year. Last year uh, we had uh, uh, roughly around 19 million people coming into Saudi Arabia for Umrah and every year uh, around 2.5 million people come to Saudi Arabia uh, to perform the rituals related to Hajj. So this is one of the largest gatherings uh, around the world that takes place and uh, Sigil technology 
uh, is responsible for uh, all the um, uh, information systems and uh, communication and integration between different parties different ministries and different uh, internal and external entities who are working collaborate in collaboration in together uh, in as, as a team uh, to fulfill all the requirements uh, starting from uh, visa processing towards the contracting uh, and transportation housing and all type of payments with different payment gateways and banks so this is the whole of the business that uh, uh, relates to the apis and integration uh, which is the sole responsibility of uh, uh, sigil technology on behalf of ministry of hajj and umrah so as you can uh, assess from this that this is a very critical type of business where we have to uh, make sure that uh, all the services that are being provided to the uh, guests of Allah, pilgrims uh, for Umrah and Hajj is done in a seamless and transparent manner. And all the information that has to be communicated with different parties and different internal and external entities uh, to serve the pilgrims in a best possible way is done through the integration platform that Sigil Technology is offering. So uh, before we proceed, uh, let's first identify the need that why we thought that we should have some API management platform in Sigil technology and why there is a need that all the assets that we are exposing uh, for uh, Hajj and Umrah must be uh, managed in a more formal way. Uh, in, uh, in case of uh, Hajj and Umrah, every year uh, the number of pilgrims coming to Saudi Arabia is growing rapidly and so is the case with the APIs and the mesh of APIs that we are exposing and the number of entities that are being integrated is also growing uh, uh, with the growth of the business. So uh, we felt a need that uh, with the growing business, with the growing APIs, it's very important for us and it's very critical for us that whatever assets uh, we are exposing as part of our APIs must be managed properly. And there should be some platform, there should be some uh, uh, proper pattern that should be followed to make sure that whatever APIs are exposed are managed uh, in a transparent and in a seamless manner. And the second important thing is that uh, uh, we wanted to make sure that whatever we are exposing uh, to the outer world, to our partners, to other integration parties, there must be certain policies which must be enforced for all the APIs. We should have some modularity in our uh, platform so that we are able to handle the growth and, uh, uh, and even the expected exponential growth in the traffic that is coming into our network. And also it was important for us that uh, whatever we are exposing to the outer world, the way uh, our integration parties are interacting with our APIs, there should be statistical analysis and we should have proper uh, formalized analytics platform so that our management is able to see the real picture how our apis are performing how our clients are onboarding how our integration parties are uh, dealing with our uh, apis and also we wanted to make sure that whenever we are onboarding and uh, new customers new partners the onboarding process should be smooth and it should be efficient and we should have a faster onboarding so that uh, our uh, our potential customers or our partners are able to uh, browse through a our APIs, they are able to look into the uh, assets that we are exposing. They should be able to uh, uh, get a clear picture of what type of uh, services we are offering and how they can benefit from it. And also it was important that uh, uptime for our APIs, uh, we, uh, we wanted to have an ideal scenario of 99.99% or 100% uh, uh, uptime for our APIs so that uh, our clients uh, don't uh, fall into a situation where they uh, find problems to serve the pilgrims uh, because of the lack of uh, availability of APIs. So these were a few important points and things that uh, we uh, took into consideration and we thought that it's very important for us that uh, we invest into API management and uh, go for an API management platform on top of the backend services that we are exposing to our customers. So once we uh, thought of this need that uh, yes, we do need API management platform, then we wanted to have a defined criteria to choose out of available options. As you know, in the market, there are a lot of uh, options available. There are different uh, closed source proprietary API management platforms available. There are certain uh, open source platforms also available. And uh, it's not a comparison. Actually, uh, this is just a disclaimer that uh, all the API management platforms that are in the market uh, we are not uh, downgrading or upgrading anyone. Uh, we believe that uh, all API management platforms have their own pros and cons. They have good features 
and they have uh, their tailored um, uh, customizations which are specifically important for certain businesses but specific to our business we have our own criteria and based on the criteria uh, it was important for us to choose out of the available options the first important thing that uh, uh, we took into consideration is the cost we did not want to spend a huge sum of money uh, on licensing licensing cost and to buy some proprietary uh, platform for which we have to pay uh, a hefty amount uh, uh, on incremental basis or on one time or whatever the option they use uh, for the license and then on top of that we have to pay for the support so we wanted that we should go for open source platform where we don't have have to uh, pay anything for the license if we have to pay anything we have to pay only for the support because that's the only thing that we uh, wanted second and th uh, important thing was that we wanted to have a platform which is feature rich we didn't want uh, to fall into an api management platform which has lack of uh, options which has lack of features and which doesn't fulfill all the needs that we have in terms of security in terms of different options for policy enforcement and in terms of uh, the richness of the features that it has the next important criteria that we took into consideration is the support model we believe that uh, if we choose either an open source platform for API management or a closed source, whatever option we choose, support model plays a very important pivotal role for uh, our business. Because we want to make sure that uh, whatever APIs we expose, in uh, God forbids, if there is an unforeseen situation or if there is any catastrophic situation for the API uh, environment that we have, we should have some caring hand on top of our head which can support us and who have the required uh, uh, level of expertise to dig into the issues as faster as possible and to come up with the solutions so that we don't fall into uh, any uh, business implications because of uh, the lack of uh, available support for the APIs. So this was an important aspect that we took into consideration. The next important aspect was that we wanted to have some API management platform which is scalable. This is very important as I explained previously that uh, uh, the kind of business we are in uh, for Hajj and Umrah this is a continuously growing business every year the number of pilgrims coming into Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj and Umrah is growing so is the case for our API so is the case for our partners so we want to make sure that whatever uh, API management platform we choose it should be scalable and it should be uh, we should be able to scale it up scale it down uh, and we should be able to serve more and more customers in future without having any uh, throughput implications the next important criteria that we took into consideration is that any platform that we choose there should be solid and uh, up-to-date documentation available for that platform and there should be community uh, also uh, there should be some active community for that uh, platform as well this is very important because uh, we cannot uh, always uh, look into the support uh, uh, tickets for every small issue and every nitty-gritty and we want to make sure that uh, whenever we uh, we have to do anything whenever we have to uh, make any changes whenever we have to make any customization or whenever we have to seek some assistance the first thing that we should have is that we should have everything available in the documentation and documentation should be uh, good enough for our resources to get themselves uh, have a self trained into the uh, api management platform and to assist uh, their team uh, and uh, get onboarded into the platform as quicker as possible and the second important thing is that uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, this uh, other than the uh, paid support that we are going to take from the API management platform there should be some uh, active community available so that uh, if we have to, uh, this type of forums or community uh, platforms available where we can uh, coordinate and communicate with other uh, people with expertise in the same area and they can all help us as well uh, to from based on their experiences based on their ideas and this will give us and our resources a better position to understand and to grasp things more quickly uh, related to API management platform and the last uh, important aspect that we took into consideration uh, while choosing uh, API management platform is that uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we don't fall into uh, 
an API management platform which doesn't upgrade itself uh, depending on the changes in the technology uh, area, depending on the security issues that are coming up uh, on a uh, uh, regular basis. And we should make sure that we are choosing an API management platform which does provide regular up upgrades, which has a proper maintenance and any bugs, any defects which are coming in into the picture are uh, resolved and fixed uh, from that product uh, in a quicker manner. So these were the things that we uh, took into consideration and based on this we uh, went for WSO2. Why we went for WSO2 uh, leaving all other options uh, out uh, from the market. Okay, so the first important thing is that we found that uh, WSO2 API management platform is well uh, uh, is uh, quite uh, mapped to the needs that we have. In the previous slide, uh, I explained the criteria uh, that we chose. And based on that criteria, we found that uh, the feature sets uh, that is available in WSO2 API management platform, it's rightly fulfilling our needs. And we feel that uh, the developer portal, publisher portal, the kind of management platform, uh, management portal it's providing, the way it's providing us different options to enforce policies, uh, and uh, the way it's providing us flexibility to go for on-premise uh, uh, solution or a hybrid solution or a fully cloud-based solution. So all these options are readily available and we can choose out of these options quite uh, conveniently. So we found that it well uh, um, maps to what we actually wanted uh, as an API management platform in our organization. The second thing is, uh, of course, uh, it's an open source platform. So directly uh, we eliminate the cost associated with the license. We don't have to pay anything from the for the license. And the only thing that we went for uh, was a support model. And for that, we went for uh, we have to be at certain cost. And again, we found that uh, it's cost effective in another way. Uh, when we went for the option of subscribing to the support model from WSO2, uh, we found that uh, the support options that were provided were quite flexible and quite customized. So whatever we wanted that we want this type of support, Want, uh, we don't want that type of support. We want this option. We don't want that option. So any customization that we wanted uh, in the support model, they were ready to provide us. And then based on that, we got a tailored uh, subscription cost. So this is one thing that uh, quite uh, uh, attracted us uh, to our WSO2 because uh, we, we think that uh, API management platform that we choose, uh, if it's, um, uh, its return on investment is higher and we don't have to pay a hefty sums of money and still we are getting the benefit and then and that's the best and ideal solution for us. The next important thing is that uh, we before we uh, even coordinated or communicated with WSO2 team uh, internally from our side, we did different POCs, we did, did uh, our own research, and we explored the documentation that is available uh, publicly from WSO2. And we observed that the documentation that is provided from WSO2 is not only uh, rich in terms of uh, all the uh, details provided, but also they are regularly updating it. And uh, their, their, uh, their documentation is in, uh, written in such a way that our resources, anyone who wants uh, to whom we think that it should be part of our internal team to manage the API can rightly just go through the documentation and get the required knowledge. So this was important thing and we found that uh, with this type of documentation, it will help us to cut cost on the future trainings. We won't have to go and communicate every time with WSO2 to offer us some training programs, uh, which, which are of course paid training program. Rather we can rely on the documentation and get our people trained internally without paying any additional cost for the training. The next and another important aspect of this uh, WSO2 API manager that we found is that uh, since uh, this is a React based uh, platform and uh, the, the, the developer portal that they provide, uh, we wanted to uh, see that how much we can customize it, how easy it is to customize and how uh, smooth it is uh, to transition uh, to have a transition from what they provide uh, by default to what we want as a customization. Uh, 
So we observed that uh, they have different configuration files and just going through those files without um, uh, making big changes to the code, we were able to make the required customizations in terms of look and feel, in terms of how we are going to uh, implement different type of security features. So these uh, were few points that uh, quite attracted us towards this uh, WSO2 API management platform. And another important thing was that they have dedicated uh, portal for uh, onboarding the customers with the name developer portal. They have separate portal for uh, publishing the APIs, uh, which API publishers will use. They have separate management portal and they have another portal where we can even define our own um, uh, throttling policies and our own customizations to all these things. So these were few important points out of many other points that we took into consideration. And finally, we decided that we should go for WSO2 API management platform. All right, so once we selected and we uh, got uh, this WSO2 API management platform uh, onboarded in our organization, how we benefited and how we are still benefiting out of it. The first important thing is that after having this dedicated API management platform on top of the backend services that we have, all our APIs came under the umbrella of API management. So as soon as our APIs came under the umbrella of API management, now we were in a better position to have an enhanced security by having all the policies enforced on our APIs we were in a better control that who can actually subscribe to our APIs, who can um, uh, who can um, take benefit out of different uh, uh, API operations uh, that we are exposing, how we can do the role-based restriction, how we can apply the throttling, how we can minimize the load on the back end, and how we can handle different type of uh, faulty invocations. So there were plenty of options that were available uh, for us, for our APIs, and now our APIs were, uh, uh, we were able to uh, make sure that we don't have to do all these things on the back end, rather we have another plat uh, this this uh, layer on top of the backend services where we can do all these things without compromising or without affecting performance on the backend. The second important thing is that the way uh, this uh, publisher portal is provided by API management. Now uh, the way we uh, we were uh, able to publish new APIs, the way we were able to uh, provide uh, prototypes the way we are able to provide different versions of our APIs, the way we can handle the life cycle of API from uh, creation to the publishing uh, and to uh, publishing a new version, to uh, retiring any version, to uh, to make any other changes to the API life cycle. This all was done. Uh, we were now able to do it more seamless manner and more transparent manner. And secondly, uh, we now have a developer portal. So once we have to onboard any customers, we are in a better position to uh, just uh, publish the APIs with the specific roles. And once we have published the APIs, our clients are our potential customers now can go to developer portal. They can subscribe to APIs. They can uh, even uh, try it out from the API portal and see how our APIs are behaving. We are in a better position to uh, provide documentation through the developer portal. And all these things uh, made uh, the whole life cycle of API management quite uh, convenient and uh, less of a hectic situation for us compared to what we have before without any API management platform on top of our backend services. Another important uh, uh, thing that we uh, observed after uh, introduction of API management platform for our business is that uh, previously, uh, uh, since we did not have API management platform on top of the backend services, so uh, we were lacking the required analytics and we were not in a better position to have dashboards and to have a clear picture that how different APIs are performing, how different clients are performing, how they are attracting to our APIs, uh, how is the throughput of our APIs, uh, how many faulty invocations we are having. So there are plenty of options available for the analytics platform that uh, is provided by WSO2, which gives us a better picture of overall API, uh, uh, API uh, ecosystem that we have. And it also provides in us a better option that if we have to um, present uh, anything regarding the statistics, re regarding the analytics of our APIs to our management, to any or, or to any other stakeholders, we are in a better position compared to the situation that we have before the introduction of API management platform. So the next important thing is that once we uh, introduce this API management platform for our business, 
we made sure that we have a, a well uh, highly available uh, clustered environment so with the introduction of clustering and with the having high availability enforced uh, we are now in a better position to make sure that our api uh, platform remains up and running most of the time and uh, literally or ideally 99 0.99 percent of the time because with the clustering we are uh, if we have to do any maintenance we are in a better position to make sure that we don't bring all of the entire cluster down rather we can uh, play with uh, our servers or our uh, clustered uh, components separately to make sure that actual business is still running while we are doing the required maintenance on the back end so here now i will explain that how we see overall value addition after introduction of api management platform for our business the first thing is that we have a better control uh, through the api management platform this thing i have already explained quite in detail in the previous slide that with the policies enforcement with the way we can control based on the roles based on the specifications based on uh, throttling policies uh, and based on the ip whitelisting blacklisting all these things uh, make it quite convenient for us to uh, have a better control on the apis and to avoid any type of um, uh, security uh, breaches or to avoid any type of malfunctioning of our apis or to avoid any type of unnecessary uh, load on the backend services and we have a better improved uh, time to market with with improved customer onboarding through the dedicated uh, developer portal so with the developer portal now uh, whenever we have a new api we can publish the api and we have an option that uh, we can expose uh, these uh, the details of our uh, published api through the developer portal developers can come to the developer portal see what kind of apis we are exposing they can show interest to the required apis to which they want to subscribe they can subscribe based on the uh, subscription tier they choose for example if they want to choose a gold subscription uh, silver subscription they want to choose a diamond subscription or whatever, whatever kind of subscription model we are offering they can go then they can try it out from there they can read the documentation even they can download different type of sdks uh, from the developer portal for example if they want to implement um, uh, the backend app they, they want to implement a developer application uh, with android sdk they, they can download that to uh, part from the developer portal if they want to do it in java if they want to do it in any other language they can simply download the ready-made sdk uh, for that specific api and they can implement on top of that and uh, as I explained in the previous slide as well that we have now a better insights to our analytics dashboard we can we can uh, present it to our business we can present it to our uh, uh, potential customers uh, uh, partners that what kind of uh, traffic we have for our APIs what is the pattern that we are following and what kind of improvements we can take place uh, uh, for our, our API ecosystem and to improve um, the user experience for uh, our customers and the next important thing is that we observed that with proper policies enforced from the API management platform, we have lower burden on our backend system because we have throttling. So any uh, throttle tra traffic will not be going to the backend. Only the valid and legitimate traffic will be going to the backend. Also, we can enforce what kind of TPS we want, transaction per second we want for the backend. And if we know that there are certain backend system which which is low in in terms of uh, its specification, we can fine tune that what what what's the maximum that we want to be uh, loaded to back that particular backend system. So with the enforcement of policies, uh, we can uh, customize and we can fine tune what kind of um, uh, load we want to uh, carry forward to the backend system and what kind of load we want to handle directly on the API management platform. Okay, so once we uh, opted for WSO2 support model, uh, let me explain that how it fits into our need. First important thing is that whenever we were uh, deciding to have this API management platform created, we uh, opted for on-site consultation from WSO2 and there were three consultants from WSO2 who came on-premise in our organization. They worked with us uh, full day uh, for a whole week and from the scratch to till the uh, completion of this uh, setup they were with us doing all the uh, implementation all the configuration and uh, um, coordinating with the with the different uh, stakeholders like database like uh, our network team and everyone uh, who is involved in the pro in the project and they made sure that uh, they come up with the completion of this setup uh, for us a production ready setup 
with all the required uh, fine tuning with the enforcement of best practices and with the performance uh, improvements to make sure that uh, we get uh, tailored and customized to our needs uh, API management platform. This was quite a good experience that uh, the consultants that were sent from WSO2 on premise, they were well equipped with the necessary knowledge and they, they had a clear picture of what we actually wanted. We had sessions with them before they came to uh, our organization. So we, clear, we clearly shared with them the requirements. We explained to them what kind of uh, architecture, what kind of uh, topology that we want, how we want to uh, have the clustering of our uh, servers, how we want to have uh, high availability for our gateways, what kind of analytics that we need, what kind of uh, options that uh, are, uh, what kind of options and customizations we need so all these things were uh, communicated to the consultants well in time and based on that they come they came up with a solution that this is the type of uh, topology that best suits to your needs and this is the one that we will be implementing once we are on site so that this was quite a good experience secondly once we have our setup ready we have our apis published to the production now we have operations running in so during the operations if we have any type of problems or any type of issues observed or faced we we have a support subscription with wso2 and we just log the incident with wso2 and there is certain sla agreed between us and wso2 so they make sure that they have zoom conferences with us to look into the issues directly and come up with the solutions in the faster manner as of now uh, we didn't face much of the issues uh, after going live but any issues that we face uh, we we are uh, quite con we're quite con uh, con uh, satisfied the way uh, consultants from wso2 are supporting us from their uh, support uh, tickets so that's it uh, from my side and this is how we are benefiting and i hope that in the future as well uh, the way uh, we are satisfied now we will continue to have this satisfaction level growing and uh, we hope that the support that we are getting from wso2 will continue to um, uh, serve us in the way they are serving us now and we will have some pleasant experience in future as well thank you okay thank you Ajmar, I think we can take some questions. There is one question so far from uh, Rovaida. Huh? I beg your pardon if, if I do not pronounce your name well. But he, um, Rovaida is asking, how do you manage the amount of data needed to run all these? I think it was related uh, uh, to the um, part of your presentation, Ajmar, when we were discussing about analytics. Because it's the only way, uh, the only part of our solution when you manage a large amount of data. Uh, basically, uh, I can take this uh, this question uh, saying that we uh, store all um, the statistic uh, data in, in a database. So it works like this. So uh, the gateway or the API manager <clears throat> send all the relevant information to a, a component, which is the analytics, and the analytics store all this data, the raw data on database. And then there is a um, a synchronous um, process of elaborate this data uh, in order to provide the, 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 the uh, manage data to uh, with, with a dashboard. Uh, second question: How do you perform the monitoring of API availability? There are uh, different uh, different options, so you can uh, connect. Um, the protocol, uh, or for example, the, the tool with um, um, different monitoring tools um, on top on top of our analytics tool. Analytics with analytics, you can monitor the API availability, but you on top of that, you can connect um, any kind of a monitoring tool or uh, log uh, analyzer tool, or um, we support, for example, JMX. Uh, Ajmal, I, I think I, I take uh, if you want to jump in any discussion. There's also a question uh, related to uh, from Yassir related to are you guys using micro gateways for API management? Answer is yes. So uh, uh, API manager can have either gateway or micro gateway or both a combination of both. 
So you yeah, and uh, let me answer to this question. Uh, yeah. For our need, uh, uh, specific to the project that we are having for Ministry of Haji and Umrah, uh, we found that uh, uh, since we have certain security requirements for the mutual SSL as well, so WSO2 consultant suggested us that in your case, uh, uh, we you will not be using micro gateways, rather we will be using uh, standard standalone gateways. So we are using uh, cluster of gateways, but we are not uh, using micro gateways in our uh, environment. Yeah. yeah, but this, okay. Yeah, to complement this, micro is an option. Depends yeah. on the architecture you are, you are doing. So, micro is more, more designed for a cloud native environment, typically. So if you have, for example, Kubernetes, Docker based environment that would be uh, perfectly suitable, a micro solution would be perfectly suitable. Uh, you can have one, the other, or both. Then there is a question that. Uh, Thanking us for the presentation. Thank to you. Um, asking, do you have a Q&A environment and what is the process you follow to go to uh, production? I think it's for you, Ajman. It's related to maybe how you are organized and related to the environments. Uh, sorry, which question exactly? Uh, I think the last one, no, not the last one. <laughs> uh, from Hamad Mabsud. Do you have a Q&A environment and what is the process you follow to go to production? Uh, we have the same uh, f f option used here as we have in any uh, type of integration platforms uh, having uh, uh, all the APIs first uh, tested in a QA or a test environment. Of course, uh, there is a difference that uh, for us, uh, uh, for QA or for testing, we are using the previous uh, API management 2.6 so this api manager 3.0 is only for production but any apis that we have to move to production uh, we first uh, do the required level of testing from our uh, test environment which is based on api manager 2.6 okay uh, ajmal i i think you can take the uh, also the others it's more related to the the the, the case you presented for example where is the hosting platform yeah, uh, we have uh, this hosting on-premise um, uh, specific to the regulatory requirement of Ministry of Haj and Umrah. We did not opt for a cloud-based uh, solution for our PM management. So all the uh, setup that we have is on-premise. Okay. Also, the other one is for you, I think. Uh, there is some question that is this a way to control the stages of Hajj or the flow of it? Uh, this is not to control the Hajj. This is to control how we expose the APIs and how we manage the APIs. So indirectly, yeah, this is something that uh, relates to uh, managing the operations of Hajj uh, for the integration services that we are uh, exposing. But this is not uh, specifically uh, controlling the stages of Hajj. Rather, it's just uh, managing the APIs uh, and API ecosystem that we have uh, in Sigil technology. Okay, then there is a question on KSA, which honestly uh, I can't understand what is it about. KSA is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, the question is uh, not clear, uh, but uh, yeah, we are in KSA because uh, Hajj is <laughs> performed in KSA. So these APIs uh, and this business that we are talking about in this case study is in KSA. So I'm not sure if the question is uh, understood by me correctly or not. Okay, and then the last one is uh, the same person as the, the first question is really the large amount of data is related to the server needs. Huh? I don't know, I think it's specific to, to the case, but if I may say that uh, WSO2 API manager is not quite demanding in terms of uh, resources, huh? typically uh, with a couple of uh, cluster, with two cores each and uh, eight, uh, something like 8 giga RAM and uh, uh, regarding the data storage is not uh, definitely not uh, not demanding because we are not as I said before we are not handling a large amount of data typically so the, the only one is the analytics and then it depends on the traffic of course you have to properly dimension your your environment uh, I don't know if you want to take uh, and Ajman and say what exactly if there is some other uh, information regarding the server deployment the deployment that, that you you can disclose 
Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I'm not able to read some of the questions. I don't know why. Okay. So there is a question, do CGL host APIs for customer to use and develop uh, their own application and uh, what method use in API manager to control the user creation? Yeah, this is a good question actually. Uh, this is the major uh, requirement that we had in uh, our case that uh, we wanted to make sure that the developers, which means uh, our partners or uh, our integration parties can implement uh, from their side whatever uh, applications they are implementing using uh, the exposed APIs from our side. So how we are um, managing it is that that we have uh, con we have a full control on all the APIs that we're exposing based on the roles and users. So uh, WSO2 API manager provides a great option to restrict the APIs and even uh, uh, operations within APIs uh, using uh, the roles and uh, uh, based on that we, we make sure that uh, only the specific uh, roles uh, user with specific role are able to subscribe to those APIs and uh, utilize them in their applications. Okay, there is a question on API orchestration or combination of API. I answer in general, not related to the use case. Of course, API orchestration is possible. So you can rely on the mediation functionalities in the gateway that you can uh, develop with a, a user interface tool. Uh, with this user interface, you can develop your uh, mediation and uh, orchestrate the flow, the inbound and outbound flow or error flow in order to uh, reach uh, different endpoints and combine uh, the API together to offer a high uh, um, orchestrated API. Uh, there's a question on WSO2 integrator. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Segel and Ministry of Hajj is not using enterprise in, uh, WSO2 integration, but that's of yeah, course we are not using it. Possible uh, eventually to combine the two products. Eh? Uh, there's also another question for you. I don't know if you can take it. There is a question, are you using identity uh, server for API authorization and access? Uh, we are not using uh, separately uh, identity product offered by WSO2, but yeah, internally uh, we are using uh, uh, this uh, Oracle based uh, uh, platform. So all the users and roles that we are creating are uh, stored in the uh, in the database and based on that we are doing all the authentication. Mm, there are many questions. I don't know if you can, but the time is over. I don't know if you can uh, go a bit over or we have to close. Uh, otherwise we will uh, feel free to contact us and submit uh, uh, yeah, so there is one more question that I would like to answer on your customized support model with WS2 uh, What uh, were some of the parameters you put forward other than the number of uh, course costing model? So here for the support uh, uh, with WS2 we didn't go with the number of cores model rather uh, uh, We went for a more customized option where we have uh, unlimited number of incident support and there is certain query support hours. So query support hours uh, is a different uh, term that is used for the support option provided by WSO2, which is for the general queries uh, related to the product. But for the incidents, we have unlimited number of incident support. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that we can't take uh, uh, there is one uh, there is one more question which is important i think uh, that needs to be answered uh, mm -hmm. let me see where is that answer what's the maximum tps which can be handled by wso2 i think this one you can answer exactly uh, if yeah. there is a benchmark from your side yeah uh, it's not an answer that we, there is a specific question but in the Simplest case still with uh, authentication enabled, uh, for example, host protocol enabled, uh, no no um, mediations or a small uh, small mediation. We can have around three uh, up to three thousand uh, transaction per second per gateway. So in yeah. So the last question that I would like to 
uh, answer is that someone Ahmad Mapsood says that let's say we need to uh, modify an API in production that is currently being consumed by a lot of clients. How would you execute this? So this is where the concept of uh, versioning comes into the picture. So normally if we have an API already in production and used by the customers, uh, we go for uh, the new version of that same API. So in the new version, we implement the changes and then we decide if we are going to continue with the previous version as well or it's going to be deprecated and later retired. So this is how we we make sure that uh, current customers are not disturbed and they are able to continue uh, utilizing the APIs and we have a new version with the new features and new changes uh, implemented. Okay, so I think we can close it here. Uh, sorry for not being able to answer all the questions, but you, as I said, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can join W. Uh, WSO2.com and uh, put any question you may uh, need to be answered and we will uh, contact you back and uh, also I want to encourage you to as I said visit our website and download our product and as I said is open source so you can start uh, working on it and uh, instead if you want a more direct contact with us fill the form and we will uh, contact you back so thank you again for uh, for attending uh, this webinar. I hope uh, you enjoy and stay, be, be in touch for the next steps.